Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So in my previous video, I have already discussed the mathematical intuition of the multicollinearity problem, right? What is multicollinearity I have discussed? That is one particular input feature is perfect linear combination or perfect linear function of one or more than one other independent variables or other input features, right? And if multicollinearity is present in your data set, that time what problem we are getting? In the calculation of the regression coefficients, which internally calculates this particular equation, A transpose A whole inverse multiplied by A transpose multiplied by B, where what is A, what is B, I have already discussed in my previous video with detailed derivation. That time, if perfect multicollinearity is present, that time what happens? A transpose A becomes singular. And as a result, inverse of A transpose A does not exist. And as a result, we cannot calculate the regression coefficients. Right? Because here, to calculate the regression coefficient, we require the inverse of this particular A transpose A matrix. Right? So if perfect multicollinearity is present, then we cannot calculate that. So the assumption, very important assumption we concluded that there should not be any perfect multicollinearity in between the input features, right? Now, in my this video, I am going to give you the intuitive explanation of the multicollinearity problem. And at the end of the discussion, we will come to know that not only perfect multicollinearity, okay, perfect multicollinearity means one particular input feature is completely dependent on one or mo more than one other independent feature, right? But it is not like that. It should be perfect, okay? Perfectly multicollinear. If there is high correlation present in between the input features, that time also there is a huge problem, okay? This also I am going to prove in my this video, right? So let us directly go to the intuitive discussion, right? So today I am going to discuss or intuitively explain why multicollinearity is a problem in linear regression, okay? Now, regression is based on linear algebra, as we have seen earlier, lots of derivation, inverting matrix, matrices, then solving linear systems and all this. Now, multicollinearity messes up with linear algebra. We have seen, we have uh, got the actual logic why multicollinearity is problem. But now, instead of going for a linear algebra approach, let us try to fill the concept intuitively, okay? So, let's go to the intuitive explanation. So, this is our simple linear regression equation and this is multiple linear regression equation, right? Y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 dot dot plus beta n xn, where x1 x2 dot dot xn are basically my independent features, okay? And Y is my dependent variable, okay? I this and this is also called. Now, try to get the feeling of the importance of these coefficients okay so suppose consider this b1 coefficient what it signifies what is the significance of this coefficient try to understand okay it basically says keep all other independent variable constant okay that is x2 x3 so on xn you keep all those as constant and vary only this x1 variable okay and what effect will be there in the output variable or dependent variable? That is basically signifies by this B1. Okay, if B1 is positively, uh, a positive and very high value, that means with little change in this independent variable X1, there is a huge change in dependent variable uh, Y. If B1 is highly negative value, then with little change in X1, there is a highly decrease in dependent variable Y. Okay, if b1 is small then obviously change of y with respect to change of x1 is also going to be less right so basically all these uh, variables signifies like same way like if you consider b2 what it signifies keep all other independent variables constant okay that is x1 x3 dot dot xn constant only change x2 and then what effect you are getting in the output that is basically signified by this b2 coefficient Simply you can understand. Now you just try to understand what will happen if suppose x1 and x2 are highly correlated. That means not perfect multicollinearity, but 
there is a few high correlation and as a result we can say that although not perfect but multi collinearity will be present that time what might happen that time basically all these coefficients will lose its importance okay because the importance of the coefficient or the significance is nothing but keeping all other independent variable constant and changing that particular independent variable what effect you are getting in the dependent variable right now suppose there is a high correlation between these two independent variable x1 and x2 now what is the significance of b2 b2 is nothing but if you want to achieve the significance of b2 that time we have to make x1 x3 all those are all those as constant and we have to change only x2 right and we have to uh, watch the effect in the output right and that that is the significance of this variable b2 right now if there is perfect correlation that time you cannot change x2 keeping x1 as constant okay because x1 and x2 are highly correlated right so that time if you change x2 then obviously due to high correlation coefficient x1 this particular independent variable is also going to change and you cannot interpret the significance of individual regression coefficients right so this is the intuitive explanation of uh, high correlation problem in between independent variables that is all the regression coefficients will lose its importance because importance you will only get when you can vary one particular independent variable keeping all constant but if there is high correlation either positive or negative does not matter but if there is high correlation that time you cannot do like this that keep one particular variable uh, changing and uh, rest all the variable constant because due to a high correlation when you are changing one particular variable the other uh, independent variable which has high correlation will also change either positive or negative that depends on situation so this is what is the intuitive idea right so if in interview you are asked that why multi collinearity is a problem then you can uh, give the answer like this okay when there is a perfect multi collinearity or uh, high correlation then every change in x is associated with a proportional change in z okay where x and z suppose are my input feature independent variables okay so for little change in x due to high correlation j will also change which is another input feature right and therefore the regression has exactly zero information or significance about what happens if x changes but j does not okay that means the regression coefficients will be insignificant right so this is the problem of high correlation okay it should not be perfect multi collinear but high correlation also creates the problem i hope you have understood now let's try to understand if high correlation is present suppose okay that time see we will only get a transpose a as singular if there is perfect multi collinearity if the multi collinearity is not perfect that means suppose co uh, correlation coefficient is not one but very high okay or not minus one uh, close to minus one that time it is not perfectly multi collinear that time obviously a transpose a is not going to be singular that then obviously we can calculate this value that then obviously we will be getting multiple regression coefficient then what is the problem right that also you should understand so if suppose high correlation is present between two input features okay and you are applying multiple linear regression that time what problem you will be getting you know it will make the estimation highly instable okay or unstable you can say now you may think how or why for discussing this let me go to one code and explain you okay so see this code import sklearn import numpy as np import pandas as pd import sigon as sns simple some important libraries i have imported then i have taken one particular dictionary okay where first one key is year corresponding to that years are stored then month corresponding to that months are stored then inter interest rate corresponding to that interest rate value as are stored so the structure of the dictionary is key is string and 
values are basically stored in array okay similarly unemployment rate and stock index price okay now this is my output which which you have to predict suppose regression problem and interest rate and unemployment rate are my input features okay now i am creating data frame using that let me run this right if i just calculate df dot head okay that is first five elements by default if we just observe we'll be getting like this okay beautiful data set we are getting now just calculate the correlation matrix okay df dot cor so what you'll be getting this one okay obviously year and month are not required because we are interested in uh, effect of in the stock exchange based on interest rate and unemployment rate all right so now uh, what we can observe that if you just check correlation in between interest rate and stock index price okay what we can see the correlation is 0 0.935793 high correlation similarly unemployment rate and stock index price is minus of 0 0.922338 so interest rate has positive correlation highly positive correlation unemployment rate has highly negative correlation okay so what you can conclude about regression coefficient from the correlation coefficient that is obviously uh, if we implement the regression multiple linear regression in this particular use case as interest rate and stock index price have highly positive correlation so what we will be getting we will be getting positive regression coefficient for interest rate and you'll be getting negative regression coefficient for unemployment rate okay because it has negative correlation right so we can verify this positive negative correlation effect using joint plot also so here i am showing using python because a uh, little bit test change is okay right because industry works uh, preference in python so you should know the python also so sms joint, joint plot i am plotting interest rate in x axis y axis stock index price and if we just run i am getting this kind of picture okay here this is distribution of stock index price here this is distribution of index rate we can clearly understand that there is a positive correlation right which we have got from this particular correlation matrix also 0 0.93 high correlation similarly unemployment rate and stock index price if you plot you will be getting this kind of plot which from the visual inspection itself you can understand this is highly negatively correlated right now what we are doing we are taking those two columns which are uh, our point of interest okay interest rate and unemployment rate our output feature is stock index price we are importing linear regression from a scalar linear model and then writing this simple code to create the model right lm3 equal to linear regression lm3.fit x comma y where x has stored my input feature y is my stock index price which is going to be my output feature then let's observe the intercept and coefficient that is nothing but intercept is 1798.4 something and coefficients are 345.54 minus of 250.14 like that okay so now you if you just observe the correlation matrix once see what you can get if you just check two input feature interest rate and un unemployment rate in between interest rate and unemployment rate correlation value is minus of 0.925814 that is these two are highly correlated okay that is although not perfectly multicollinearity is present but they have high correlation so this particular in this particular use case if you are going to apply regression then that will be highly unstable okay or instable okay so you can just check what i want to say suppose I am giving one example. You just consider this particular line LM3 dot predict 2.75 5.3. That is, if my interest rate is 2.75 and unemployment rate is 5 uh, rate is 5.3, that time what value we are getting as stock index price 1422.86 something. Okay. Now I am changing little bit. The interest rate okay from 2.75 I, I am changing to suppose 2.76 okay this one and keeping unemployment rate constant see what value we are getting 1426 that is from 2.75 when you are changing to 2.76 there is a huge change in stock index see 1422 uh, 22 
here we are getting 1423 okay that is one small change in one particular feature is changing the output by basically more than four units okay so why this is happening right you have to understand this intuitively see very easy to understand if you just consider this particular equation then when you are changing this particular variable little bit then if this variable has correlation with this variable then due to high correlation this variable is also going to change that means when you are changing one variable basically internally two variables it is trying to change and as a result impact in the outcome will be huge okay that's why with little change in one particular independent variable okay we are getting huge change in output because why because this feature and second feature that is interest rate and unemployment rate are highly correlated very huge uh, correlation is present right so that's why we always say that this is a huge problem and it will make the estimate highly instable okay right so i hope you have understood that not only perfect multi collinearity but if high correlation is also present in my data set that is also going to be a huge problem right and i have proved this using this simple code also the code i'll be posting in the description box or in the comment section or i'll be uploading in my github repo you can uh, i'll be posting the link there you can go and check there right so this is all for my this video i hope you have understood the intuitive feeling and like this kind of questions are very important with respect to machine learning and data science related interview process to prepare this well right this is all for my this video thank you for watching